have PlayStation Brazil just leaked the launch date of Overwatch 2? And Jeff has been active on the forums talking about Batiste nerfs. And also, we're going to cover a bunch of other stuff in this video. It's going to be really jam-packed, guys. So, hey, welcome to the channel. I'm Stalosa. Let's get stuck into this. So, Jeff has been talking about Batiste nerfs on Reddit. This is good news. We all like a bit of communication from the devs. And finally, they're back from their Christmas holiday. So, check this out. A user on Reddit says, the cooldown on Batiste's immortality field should start after it's destroyed. And that's a fair point. It really should. Immortality field is pretty damn good. But Jeff turns up to this and actually says this. We're trying out some changes to Immortality Field to make it less oppressive. I missed the playtest today, so I'll ask the crew how it went. And I sat there reading this, guys, and I was like, finally, there's a bunch of issues in the game right now. There's Batiste, there's Hanzo, there's Mei. These heroes really need looking at. There's other problems as well, don't get me wrong. But it's good that they're looking at issues which make the game unfun. Now, Immortality Field is an ability that is not really very fun when you suffer its effects. So if you've got an awesome ultimate combo, maybe a Grav Dragon, and then Batiste just throws down Immortality Field and he's like, ha ha, you don't get to do that. It's not great. And that's kind of the theme with Immortality Field. It's a pretty much a ha ha ha, you don't get to do this now because I've done this. It is the best ability in the game and by that i mean just standard ability not an ultimate ability just normal ability it counters loads of things it means batiste can stay alive probably when he shouldn't it means he can bail his team out when they're feeding their brains out he can do all kinds of mad stuff with it it's just really good but i think even if it's nerfed batiste would still be pretty good he still puts out loads of healing he's like a really high skill hero he's really fun to play puts out really great damage as we know <laughs> um so he's just a good hero so maybe they do things like reduce the health of the drone, reduce the radius of the effect. But it's good news, guys, that they're looking at this. And hopefully, these changes come out fairly soon because he does kind of need looking at. So let's get stuck into this. This is PlayStation Brazil tweeting that Overwatch 2 is going to come out in 2020 or be available on the PS4 in 2020. Now, this tweet was very rapidly deleted. There are a few reasons why this could be the case. Number one, it shouldn't have been tweeted. Number two, it contains incorrect information. So we always have to be aware of that. You know, we can't look at these things and go, oh my God, this is a 100% leak. We have to be, you know, intelligent about this. But this is what Twitter says when you use its translate function. Because of course, I can't speak Portuguese, ladies and gentlemen. It says this, 2020 will be the year that Overwatch 2 arrives on PS4. And to prepare, we talked to some of the developers who gave us hot information. Read the interview. Now, that interview link goes to an interview that was actually translated to Portuguese from English that the devs made on the 27th of November after BlizzCon, which doesn't contain any information on Overwatch 2. So why would they put in the tweet, oh yeah, by the way, Overwatch 2 is coming out in 2020 and it will be on PS4, but then linked to uh, an interview which contains no new information. I don't know, guys. It could come out in 2020. I've still got my money on 2021, but the thing is, Maybe it does come out in 2020 because that's when the new consoles come out. And maybe Overwatch 2 is a PlayStation 5 and Xbox, whatever the Xbox X is it? I don't know, whatever it's called. The, the new Xbox, when they launch, maybe it's a launch title. Okay, other stuff I want to talk about very quickly is this. Florida Mayhem have changed their color scheme. Finally, they've now got the Miami Vice color scheme they should have always had when the league launched instead of the absolutely shit McDonald's like red color scheme. I don't know why they did that. It was just really bad. And I think that they sold no skins. So now Blizzard, a little bit worried, and decided to change the color scheme. And rightfully so, because this actually looks like a really nice color scheme. If you, like, hide the mayhem bit, I like the color scheme. <laughs> Not really the biggest fan of mayhem, obviously. But um, yeah, like, color scheme, good Blizzard, good job. So it's, it's great that we're seeing this. Now, what I want to do, guys, for the rest of this video is I want to try something a little bit different. I want this discussion piece to go out in the video. And it's going to be on this. This is about Overwatch League. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Do you like Overwatch League? Are you looking forward to the Overwatch League latest season, which is only a month away? Because, of course, this is all the homestands and all that stuff going on. I want you guys to answer those questions in the comments below. Uh, I am reading the comments in this video. I always read the comments on my videos, but especially this one, because I want to see how invested you guys are in Overwatch League and if you're looking forward to it. So let's just build the picture here, because this is a massive year for Overwatch League. A lot of people are saying it's a make or break year. It's, this is the year where we'll finally see if the homestand system will work. So all of the games this year are in the various countries around the world. All the teams have to host a minimum of two homestands. So that means if you are in the UK, 
you will have two chances to see Spitfire. Now, with Spitfire, there is a home stand in London um, because obviously it's London Spitfire, but also there's one in Birmingham as well. And now the reason for that is, well, I don't know whether you guys are aware, but the UK is not just London, right? The UK is actually a fairly big country and there's other places apart from London. So we wanted to spread that around and say, hey, there's also going to be a home stand in the middle of the country. So it makes it more accessible to people from all over the place. Hell, it would be easier for Scottish fans to come down, for example, or wherever you're based, right? It's just going to be easier. That's cool. And it means there's a lot of opportunities there in the UK if you want to watch some Overwatch. Now, you don't have to be a London Spitfire fan. I mean, the first home stand uh, in London, I believe we have got uh, NYXL, uh, Toronto and Paris down. So really good team. So if you're an NYXL fan, you would come and see it because there's NYXL, right? But all of these homestands are happening all over the world. And the big question is, will people actually turn up to them? Will the teams be able to make enough money through ticket sales and merchandise sales to warrant the massive investment that they made at the start of Overwatch League? Because, of course, through the first two seasons of Overwatch League, it was all hosted in LA. That was fine. I mean, that had its benefits because it meant the production team was working together all the time. So there'd be less technical problems. Um, Blizzard probably had like easier control over issues when they did happen. Whereas now, with it all going on the road, there's a lot of opportunities for things to go wrong. The travel for the players is ridiculous. Like, they have to do tons of travel. There could be travel delays. There could be visa issues. There could be just travel problems in general. Um, players might not be happy with all the travel because there is a lot. Um, the games might be not as good quality because too much travel, not enough practice. Um, loads of stuff could happen. But the big news surrounding Overwatch League, and you guys, if you are fans of Overwatch League, you probably, you're probably aware of what I'm about to talk about, and that is the um, the loss of a lot of veteran esports uh, casters and production and such, which has happened over the last like two years, really, of Overwatch League. Um, so what I want to focus on is obviously Monte Cristo, um, Pocket, uh, Doa. These guys are no longer part of the Overwatch League, which is a... It, it, it's a shame. Because these guys are huge names when it comes to esports and they do provide a lot of stuff and they provide stuff that you guys and, and we don't really see because it's behind the scenes stuff. Like they help with the broadcast. Uh, they would have awesome ideas because they're, you know, they're industry veterans. They know what they're talking about. But the thing is, the loss of these guys, um, you can take two sort of approaches to it. You can say, OK, this is really bad for the league. Uh, these guys are amazing talent and, and we've lost them. So that makes Overwatch League look a bit crap. because It's like, well, they can't even keep the big names. They're just leaving. They're going to do their own thing. They don't believe in the vision anymore. But on the other hand, it gives people who maybe didn't have the chance now the chance to step forward and start producing content in Overwatch League. And we could get some awesome caster duos. I mean, we've already got ZP and Jake are announced. Now, this could have just been planned anyway before all the big names left the Overwatch League team. Or it could have been a reaction from Blizzard. I don't think we'll ever really know um, the answer to that. But still, it's fresh blood. It's it's new casters. It's, you know, it should be exciting to see. But the fact remains, it doesn't really matter what is going on with Overwatch League, with the casters, with the, you know, the production, with the home stands. The main problem is, are you guys interested in actually watching these games? Now, I have got a bit of an issue with Overwatch Competitive right now. And I think this is an issue I've had for a while. So you guys know me. I like to play just to sort of get better at the game. I always like to have a goal, which would be, OK, I'm going to play this hero and I'm going to focus on maybe let's say, I mean, you guys can see we've got some McCree footage running in the background. Maybe it's like, OK, I'm going to play McCree, but I really want to focus on Tracer jewels. So that's kind of the thing I'm going to work on. And then when I do come up against the Tracer, I'm really going to analyze why did I not kill her? Maybe why did I kill her? And really go into detail, right? Because that's what I enjoy. The thing with Overwatch, though, is that's not like that's not a typical player. That's somebody who's a bit crazy like me. You need a reason to play. And what is the reason to play competitive? Now, if you have no reason to play competitive, then you have no reason to watch the highest level of competitive, which is Overwatch League. You get what I'm saying, guys? And you've got these problems with Overwatch throughout the, the system, well, I guess the ecosystem of the game. And that was an awesome kill by Winston. But you've got these problems where... I just don't think there is a reason to really play competitive. Like, nobody cares about golden weapons. Like, no one's going out there going, oh, I'm going to grind competitive to get myself these badass golden weapons. You just do not care. But the other problem I've got is Overwatch 2 in this regard. Overwatch 2's PvE. Now, Overwatch League is PvP. Blizzard are making Overwatch 2 to entice PvE players to play Overwatch, 
which I think is awesome. Like I, I, I want PVE. I've always wanted PVE in Overwatch, so I can't wait to play it. But it's not really going to bring PvP players back. And even if somebody comes in playing PVE, they then still have to go and play PvP. So that's another sort of hurdle to get over. Then they need to really get invested in PvP for some reason that Blizzard give us maybe new rewards or something. And then they start going, well, I want to watch the best teams play. And then they start watching Overwatch League. And then maybe they go to a homestand. Now, this is a massive year for Overwatch, just in general. Overwatch League could tank. But Overwatch League could also do okay. The problem that I think is really difficult to highlight is if you watch Overwatch League on Twitch, and maybe it's only got 50,000 viewers, or maybe it's got 40,000 viewers, or 30,000 viewers, I don't know. By all metrics, you would be like, well, this is terrible. Like, who the hell is watching Overwatch League? You know, look at this random CSGO major. It's got 100,000 viewers, right? Or something. Just throw anything in there. Why hasn't Overwatch got the viewers? Well, because people are not playing Overwatch, so they wouldn't then watch the Overwatch League, yeah? So you have to be playing the game to be interested in it. But the also, the, the, the thing here is, it's not really about that when it comes to the teams. What it's about, and, and, and I guess the owners of the teams, it's seeing if they can host events in their local regions and people turn up to watch. These homestands are probably going to have anywhere between 500 to 1,000 seats, most likely. Maybe some will be bigger, maybe some will be slightly smaller. And they're trying to sell tickets to viewers who are fans of the game so they come out and watch because it's in their local area. And it's more so, like I said earlier on in the video, than just the draw of, oh, it's a London homestand, so I, I'm not a London fan, I'm not going to that. Because also this NYXL, there's Toronto, there's Paris, you know, there's all these other teams out there. They would draw you towards that and you go, okay, cool, this is going to be awesome because I, I maybe my favourite player is Cruz, but he plays for Paris, but actually he's coming to the UK, so I'm going to check it out. One thing I want to end the video on, though, guys, and I know, you know, you, you guys know Overwatch has been a massive part of my life for years and years now. And I've been heavily involved in Overwatch League with Spitfire and just in Overwatch League in general and, and professional Overwatch with teams like British Hurricane and um, also Seven Lions for the Overwatch uh, World Cup. Which, by the way, we've got seven players who've made it to Overwatch League through that team and two coaches, which is just phenomenal a result for the team. So I, I've been involved in the scene for a while. I know I don't generally make tons of content on it because, again, I think it's really difficult to do that because I don't think a lot of people are interested in it. And the simple fact of the matter is all you need to do is look at the viewing figures on videos. So when you talk about Overwatch League stuff, it's generally not as good as other videos and that just indicates people are not really interested in it and so it's really difficult and that's not a creator's problem that's a problem for blizzard to fix by making it more interesting to talk about these things so yeah it's a it's a big year guys and there's probably points i i wanted to make and i've rambled on a bit i don't know but i wanted to make this sort of segment of the video just be a pure discussion segment where i am talking about overwatch league i'm talking about it passionately and i'm talking about where it goes and where it doesn't go and if it'll be a success or if it won't be a success i'd like for it to be a success i really would but i'm just worried that maybe we won't get the viewing figures that will make it look great maybe people don't turn up to the home stands because they're not really that interested in overwatch anymore and that's up to blizzard to fix overwatch league starts in a month in february and i think the first home stand is i think it's i think dallas and new york is it i think it's new york or something i think it might be new york um, but it's going to be cool to see it. And again, all the eyes of the esports industry and everybody else will be looking into this going, well, is this going to be a failure? Is it going to work? And yeah, it's, it's a really interesting time for the game, but also worrying. But maybe we get a bunch of updates. One thing I'd like to see is Jeff comes out and just straight up says, look, this is what we're working on in 2020. This is what's coming out fairly soon. Just give us an update or something. Um, yeah. All right, guys, I'm in danger of rambling literally for hours now, so I'm going to leave the video. Thank you guys for watching the video. I love all of you guys. Um, without you, I would not be here producing content, so thank you again for watching all my videos, especially over the years, um, and especially on Overwatch. It's been a crazy ride. And uh, yeah, all right, guys, I'll catch you lovely lot on the next video. Toodaloo.